You see this little picture here, and it depicts eight simple principles. This little hand talks about godly trust. This talk about open air. This talk about daily exercise and soothing sunshine and proper rest and lots of water and always temperate and nutrition. Simple principle, eight simple principles. This is brief testimony. Also, I probably go, we have a tape on here that share this little testimony of mine that I was clinically diagnosed about, ah, sometimes I forget time, about 51 years ago. How many years ago was that? Did anybody hear what I just said? How many years? Okay. It's about 51 years ago. No, it was not 50. It was 41 years ago. I'm feeling a little older. 41 years ago. I mean, no, huh? Yeah, that's right, because I keep thinking about 27. I needed a good mathematician, because I was diagnosed at the age of 17, so it was 51 years ago. It was 40-some years ago. Yeah, 51 years ago. That's right, Karen. So I was clinically diagnosed with not arthritis. It was rheumatoid arthritis. We'll explain that in a moment. Rheumatoid. And that lasted till I was 27. So that was a 10-year battle. In that period between 17 and 27, I was in college. And this is an old picture of me here. I think I look a little better now. You know, as you approach, get close to the Lord, it seems like you get a little better. Right, dear? Yes. Okay. So this is a picture of me. And um, in my junior year in college, I was being drafted into the NBA. A couple of teams, one was Philadelphia and several other teams. And at the same time, during that time of my being drafted into the NBA, there was a war going on. And that war was called Vietnam War. Anybody heard of the Vietnam War? The Vietnam War. Let me get on this side very quickly. And during that war, you did not enlist or sign up. They had what they call a draft lottery, a draft lottery. That means every young man, 18 over, would get a number, a number. And from 100 to 300, you were definitely going to be drafted into the Army. My number out of 300 was 53. What was my number now? 53. 53. And did you think I was uh, interested in going into the service? Now, I don't want to sound unpatriotic, but I really did not have any enemies, nowhere. And Vietnam was not something that I was interested in. So I had two institutions drafting me. Now, anybody remember those two institutions? Which one's the first institution? NBA. NBA. What was the other one? United States Army. You want to be patriotic. So my number came up, number 53. And so when I was called in, make a long story short, and I don't know, you said you've been in the service? Yes. You've been with the Army? I don't know. But they gave me what they call the highest rejection that they didn't give anyone. The highest rejection. And they give you a number and a letter. It could be one F, two, but they gave me four F, four F, nothing beyond that. I was unfit even to clean the little tree. Have mercy. So now, do you think I was disappointed? Because you know, when the army don't want you, your manhood go down to the basement. But I went out there leaping and skipping with arthritis. <laughs> My hands in the air, didn't know anything about God, but just hands in the air. I was elated, overwhelmed. I could have kissed Uncle Sam. But my passion was basketball, basketball. And with a very short attempt, those old bad knees and the old rheumatoid arthritis ended that career. You think I was elated about that? No. No. Coming out of the ghettos of Chicago, 
That was my ticket. What I consider as fortunate and fame. My money, my honey wagon. <laughs> that's what I consider it. But that's short lived. 10 year battle. I always wanted to be number one. I was telling my students today, I said, you know, I had a passion to excel in everything I did, except for being morally sound. So I was number one, painfully number one, painfully number one. Medication, here's a question. Is the remedy worse than the what? What do you think about that? Uh, Painkillers, you know, I thought about the individual that uh, seemed like American is morning, uh, Prince. I don't think it's conclusive now. Same with Michael Jackson. Painkillers, painkillers. Listen to the word, painkillers. Actually, killing folk, killing folk. Took a lot of painkillers, a lot of painkillers. Didn't get any better, got worse. King Arthur, 41 years ago. I was not, again, it's mean I was not a one that would applaud God. I, I knew there was a God, but he was not in my, you might say, mind. But when I was in college, and the fact is that which I became rejected by the NBA, I picked up the Bible. You know, I had a mother that was very strong, Christian. I picked up the Bible, and the thing that caught my attention was the Old Testament. And there was one verse that really got me started. You might put it in your mind. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. It says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And that was amazing. I said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. From the Bible. So I understood that principle physiologically. I understood that the blood is the current of life. And then that set a criteria for me to begin to study out this condition I had. And so, in the book of Psalms 107, verse 17 to 21, it says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So again, healing in His word. And so, this little book I showed you, you'll find all these principles. In the book of Psalms 100, verse 3, Know ye not that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are of his people and the sheep of his pasture. These texts began to resonate with me. I realized that I did not belong to myself. I realized I was treating this body as though it was mine. And so I realized, too, that since God had ownership, he has an owner's manual. And so I began to study the owner's manual. Every product comes with a manufacturer's on this manual. You agree with that? Amen. The car you drive comes with one. The computer comes with one. And so these principles, I didn't see them in this order, but in the Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, begin to pick out these principles. And so I will share with you not all of these principles, but a few things that I did that reversed this process. So, God's plan for taking the what? Right. Out of arthritis. And that's why we're here. How to take itis out of arthritis. We find that arthritis, the number one crippling disease worldwide, especially in developing countries. Now, my wife and I, we've had the privilege to travel around the world. From the deepest jungles of Papua New Guinea, Solomon Island to Africa, but here in the Western world, Europe and America, we find it's the number one crippling condition. We find the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs 26, 2, every disease has a cause. How many believe that? You believe that? Hmm? It has a cause. The Bible says the curse causeless should not come. Now, I'm going to say something to ask you a question. The cure is in the cause. What do you think about that? The cure is in the cause. What does that mean? Maybe to not those who are familiar with those, those who are just maybe new to this. What does it mean the cure is in the cause? What do you think? I see that dear lady very pensive looking at this. What's your name out here? 
Doris. Doris, what do you think it means when it says the cure is in the cause? Now listen to the word. The cure is in. What causes the disease is also the cure. All right. The cure is in the cause. What causes the diseases? You say you find the cure. You will find the cure. So now how? You find the cause, you'll find the Okay, so how it works then? Very practical. You're right. If you find the cause, you find the cure. So once you find the cause and to effect the cure, what do you think you should do? Find the, find the cause. No, you, well, once you find the cause. The cause you'll once find you find the cure. So you find the cure to know the cause. Now I want you to listen. I want everybody to get this because physician heal thyself. Now remember, the cure is in the cause. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, it is caused by something, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So in order to get the cure, what should I do? Find the cause. All right, we said that. Stop doing what causes. Stop, remove the cause. the cause. You get it? Yeah. The cure is in the cause. Once I find the cause, I remove the cause I have the cure. Does that make sense to anybody? Amen. Whether it's high blood pressure, whether it's, I was given a, a presentation on mental health today. And the cause, and once you find the cause, remove the cause, you have the cure. Apply to anything in your life. Follow me? We find cause to effect. The curse causes should not come. The cause leads to the effect. Arthritis, let me ask you a question. Arthritis, cause or effect? Effect. Arthritis, cause or effect? Effect. It's the effect. It's the effect. It's not the cause. So we're here to learn about the effect. So when you go to the doctor, does he treat you for the cause or for the effect? For the effect. So you're always going to have the effect. Mm -hmm. But once you find the cause, remove the cause, you also eliminate the effect. Does that make sense to anybody? Perfect. All right, then. So here's how disease works. Now, share this statement. Disease, follow me now, is an effort of nature to free the system of conditions that comes as a result of the violation of the laws of health. Now these are symptoms, coughing, sneezing, running nose, fever, all above are, that's what it said, all the above are efforts of nature to do what? Relieve. To relieve itself of conditions that result from violating the laws of health. Very simple, very simple. Many doctors, drugs, painkillers, to the point you become addicted to it. These are symptoms, a cough. So when you treat the symptom for coughing, what kind of medication will you take for coughing? Cough syrup. Cough syrup. Cough suppressant. Did you understand? Now what does that mean? Cough suppressant. Something to prevent you from coughing. All right. Suppress the cough. It suppressed the cough. Now, let's take nature of manifesting this symptom is trying to do what? It's trying to get rid of the congestion, the mucus. So if you take a cough suppressant, what are you doing? You're, you're suppressing the cause. You're interfering with nature efforts to free itself. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. You have a sneezing, runny nose. The mucus just draining out of your body as it's coming out. You don't want that ugly stuff coming out. So you take an antihistamine. So you trap the mucus within your sinus tract, and therefore you think you relieve. Now it's building up calcium deposit. Next time they're gonna do a little operational procedure on your sinus. Fever. What's the process of fever? What's the mechanism involved? The body is what raising its temperature to do what? To cure, kill the virus. So do you want to put out the fire? No. 
But you want to control the fire. Are you following me? Yeah. Keep that in mind. We all drive automobile. I know many years ago when I was driving automobiles and money was funny, I see my alternate, alternate light coming on. It's just blinking it because the light is very bright in here. It's just blinking. Now, what is that telling you? Something is no good under the hood. Would you say so? <laughs> nah. So you just look at that and break the alternate light out. What do you think about that? That solves the problem? No, no it doesn't. That's a warning. Notice what it says here. Treating symptoms is like mopping a floor while the water continues to pour. So I think a wonderful solution because we are very concerned about the economics of our community. So what we do, we'll get more mops. We can hire more people to help keep the water mopped up. What do you think about that? Will that impact the economics? Aren't you concerned about the economic welfare of your community? No, I'm concerned about getting that water. Though. Well, that's what you're going to hire more people, and therefore the company will make more mops. Listen now, the manufacturer the mop company, they're going to make money. You're going to hire more people. Now you're impacting the economy. What do you think about that? Now, you might not see the rationale behind it, but there's a vicious circle within our Medicaid system. So we understand the very obvious solution to this problem is turn off the water. Are you following me? But we have to impact, even as you listen to your politician today, talking about, you know, we're going to reduce the trillion dollar debt of the United States in one person, maybe in 10 years. But that money got to come from somewhere. And someone going to come on the low end of that money. But in God's plan, it solves the problem. It definitely solves the problem. So what is arthritis? In the Bible, I went to the Bible because the doctor just says inflammation. I went to the Bible to get some understanding. This is over 40 some years ago. Colossians, this is in the New Testament, chapter 2, verse 19. Now notice what it says. Principles in the word of God. And not holding the head from which all the body by what? And what? Bands. Bands, those are the ligaments. Having nourishment, minister, and knit together, increase with the increase of God. So the body is held together by joints and ligament that nourish the body that gives the increase, the strength. Joints and band. All right, here's another one. Ephesians 4, 6. From whom the whole body, what? He joined together, come Packed it by that which every joint supply. What does the joint supply? Movement. movement. That's right. Every joint supply movement. Can we see that? That's what the Bible says. Every joint supply according to the effectual working of the measure of every part. Every part. The ligaments. The joints. It says every part make it increase of the body unto edifying of itself in love. And so the joint supply movement. And when I had my battle with rheumatoid arthritis, I would have to get iced up, heat up, wrapped up, uh, whirlpool up. I would have to stay in a whirlpool bath maybe an hour or two before I even go out on the court. And therefore, after it was all over with, it would take me another 24 to 48 hours for my body just to come back to equilibrium. And so I had a passion for sport, so I played with excruciating pain. It was amazing for me to run up and down the court and jump as I did. Joints. Now what is it that every joint supply? Mobility. The various joints are described by the names such as the pivot ball, the socket, the hinge. God designed the body to move, and he gave us joint to facilitate these movements. Arthritis is such a serious condition because it restricts mobility, which our loving Father designed every joint supply. Every joint supply mobility. Huh? The word arthritis comes from the Greek word arthon, meaning joint. That's where this word comes from. The word itis meaning what? 
inflammation. Therefore, arthritis is simply a condition of inflamed, swollen joints, which cause much pain and suffering. Listen to what the Word of God says about this condition. He is chastened also with what? Pain, pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. Hmm? That's the experience we have with arthritis. Job 33, 19. Inflammation of the joints. Pain, stiffness, swelling, redness. Some signs of joint damage. Cartilage minimizes the friction between joint. Here's the cartilage here. It's like the cushion. And we sometimes work with people who has deterioration of the cartilage. And then you can end up with bone against bone. I don't know if you ever had that, but bone against bone is just like rocks, scraping rocks of metal, excruciating pain. Different types of arthritis, osteoarthritis. Anybody know what osteoarthritis is? Hmm? Anybody? Nobody? Well, here it affects definitely the bones. Rheumatoid arthritis is dealing with the immune system. So autoimmune, that was my condition. What about gout? I remember one of our first cases, been many years ago, we ran into a lot of folks after that. There was a dear lady, middle-aged lady, she was in a wheelchair and her hands were all twisted, her legs were definitely swollen and she could not walk two feet without some support. As we went into her home and ministered to her, we found two things that she had a passion for that contributed to arthritis. Two things. She loved sugar and didn't like water. Those two things. I want you to remember that when I come back to that. Gout. Bursitis. Mine also, I had bursitis along with rheumatoid. Inflammation of the bursa. The bursa carries a fluid called the synovial fluid. It lubricates the joint. Become inflamed. And then when you walk, you hear shrink, like a little tin man. And then it said ankylosing spondylitis. Anybody know what that is? It affects the spine. Arthritis in the spine cannot move. All of these are different types of arthritis. Inflammation, inadequate blood supply. There's something like 60,000 miles of blood vessels run through our system. Now, get a picture of that. If you take your blood vessels, say these are line, take your blood vessels and put them in a straight line, it will go around the Earth equator two and a half times. Now, the blood, red blood cells, travel through the, through the 60,000 miles of blood vessel at a speed of something like 70 miles an hour. We're not even conscious. You know, when you hear a little sound in your ears and blood pressure, the blood is rushing through, but that might be a traffic jam. Traffic jam, you see. They go single foul. Why? Because if this is a blood vessel going through my arteries, oxygen is carried on the outside of the blood vessel, oxygen. Oxygen is not on the inside, it's on the outside. You understand what I'm saying? So it's carried this pressure cargo. Now, if my fist was a blood vessel and they began to go through and they began to get stuck together. So the oxygen depreciate, you follow me? Then more stuck. So they trying to squeeze through that little narrow pathway, then the heart has to pump harder and harder in order to get that blood through that way. Life of the flesh is where? In the, in the blood. Life of the flesh is in the blood. Every joint needs supply of the blood. Every joint. Injury, excess wear. As an athlete, I had to always be wrapped up. Excess wrap. Now coming on a, coming, playing on a hardwood court that does not give. And when you're jumping three or four feet in the air, and you're coming down, that's a shock to the body. Now, the body is fearfully wonderful made. It can take much abuse. And this is why, you know, these athletes in football and basketball, lifespan is very short. And you find most of these athletes, uh, we had a, a doctor, I, I believe he, he, he dealt with spinal injuries. And the impact 
as we come down, it began to shrink our spine. It began to deteriorate the disc behind that. That's wear and tear on the body. Gout, wear and tear, rich food, inactivity. We find here rheumatoid arthritis, attacks the joint, autoimmune. Autoimmune could be allergies, whatever. But that means that the immune system actually attack your tissue. We call that friendly fire. Friendly fire. In the army, they call it blue on blue. During the, uh, I believe it was the Gulf War, we had a lot of incident of the United States Navy shooting at their own airplanes, mistaking their airplanes for the enemy. That's autoimmune. Your immune system, which is supposed to be your friend, actually is attacking your tissue. So God's plan for the preservation and restoration of health. So let's see then, as we conclude here, we got a brief picture of this condition. Now that we need a solution. What do you think about that? Amen. We need a solution. Very simple solution. And like I said, in this book, it will give you more information. Very simple reading. God's plan, taking the itis out of arthritis. So what about genetics? Well, now my mother had arthritis. Very bad. But see, you're not born with a disease. You inherit what we call a predisposition. You get what I'm saying? The Bible says that God will visit the iniquity of the father to the children to the third and fourth generation. Then also, he says, that's hope. Now, that's a learned behavior. But we can inherit a weakness within our system. Are you following me? That will make us predisposed to this condition if we continue in the lifestyle of our parents which I did. I continued the lifestyle. All right? So we find. What does it say? Yes. Well, let me get to that. We'll get that. We'll see that in a moment. That's a good point. Good question. Now, read this. What does it say? Heredity? What does that mean to you? You don't have to end up with it. If we take ownership immediately. Huh? Old saying, heredity what? But what? Lifestyle. Lifestyle pulls the trigger. So we have a predisposition. The gun is loaded. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. And we can keep our hand on the trigger. But lifestyle, as you ask, that's what we're going to talk about. It pulls the trigger. Who hand is on the trigger? My hand on the trigger. So I have something to do with lifestyle. I can reverse this. Okay? So we find. I go to the top of God's plan. You remember? Eight simple principles. The first one is godly trust. Let me show you. In my life, when I had rheumatoid arthritis, oh, this was also a friend of mine, stress. What do you think about that? Under stress, in, sc in school, trying to reach that golden goose egg. Not a degree, professional basketball player. The school just afforded me an opportunity, an arena, I can display my talent, stress. The mind affects the body, increase the heart rate. Notice this, blood vessels constrict, blood fats increase. The immune system is weakened under stress. The body produces corticosteroids coming from the adrenal glands. And the fact is, we find that overproduction of corticosteroid tends to weaken the immune system. Digestion stops. Nutrients are used up, such as calcium and potassium, which affects the joint. And less waste removed. What does that mean? That means even going to the bathroom begins to be abnormal. And so when that waste is not eliminated, it's reabsorbed back into the bloodstream due to stress. All of that toxins dumped in. Stress lowers potassium. What about calcium? You heard of calcium? What's the purpose of calcium? Bone. Bone. Huh? That's why they tell you to drink your glass of milk a day, right? Yeah, calcium. Problem. Stress. The adrenal gland sits right on top of the kidneys. Produce hormones that keep the kidney, the joints healthy. Stressed out adrenal glands do not work. Stress affects our adrenal glands, which affects our joints. Do you know? Stress 
contribute to arthritis? Mm -hmm. Hmm? That's what it's saying here. That's what I had. So remember now, the curse causeless should not come. We said, find the cause, remove the cause, we have the solution. So keep this in mind. Exercise. Now this was not my problem because I was an athlete. I was very active, but a lot of folks. Notice what the Bible says in Luke 13, 33. What it says? I must what? Walk today and next week. Oh, oh it says the day and tomorrow. This is what it says? And of what? Oh, what does that tell you? It's consistently. No, how, you, how much exercise? Well, once a month I go to the gym. <laughs> Jesus said, you walk today, tomorrow, and the next day. Is that what it says? Consistency. Blood flows through the body. A stagnant blood produces, you know, mosquitoes. Go back. Mosquitoes thrives on stagnant water. It doesn't thrive on moving water. Exercise. If you just walk. Every day. You know, I have a close friend of mine. He's like a spiritual father. He put this pedometer on him, and he counts every step. He said, I have walked 50,000 steps. Then you compute that into miles. You know what I'm saying? Movement. Movement is life. Exercise. People don't move. They become inflamed. Prevention is better than cure. Exercise for life. Exercise strengthens the bones. It helps the calcium fortify those joints. Strengthen the bones, as I mentioned. A healthy weight exercise helps you do that. The more unneeded weight, it put pressure on those joints. So weight management is important. Like a suspended bridge, you see these cables here, this bridge, it put stress, but therefore exercise help that stress. Well, I know ladies like high heels, even men not wearing high heels, but I, anyways, high heels throw your whole gait off. It pulls, take your spine out of line. So it's good to watch those high heels. Now this was a problem that I had. I had a stress problem. And I didn't like water. Gator Aid. What did I say? Gator Aid. Those sweet drinks. Water is essential in dealing with arthritis. Water is the key to all bodily function. Notice what it says here. Circulatory system, assimilation. That's when we take in food. It assimilates digestion, elimination, temperature control. The brain, 75% water. The heart. 75%, lungs, 86% water, kidneys, 83% water, the muscles, 75% water, the blood, 83% water. It did not say Gatorade or Kool-Aid, which I grew up on, Kool-Aid. The bones also. Drinking water aids res respiration, digestion, saliva, tears, temperature control, flexibility. Now. When you and I do not drink water, the body is, is built by God to compensate for that. If you don't take water in, the body will take water from other parts of your body. Do you understand that? Even take from your brain. Your brain is over 80% water. And we're talking about inflammation of the brain. It takes water from the heart. It will take water from your joints. Water will, water will come from your joints because the cartilage cells are immersed in water. It lubricates the joint. So water was one of the things that I did not drink. I did not like water. I like that sugar water. So here we are. If, I, if you and I do not drink enough water, the body is designed to survive. That's right. It would take water from the blood. The blood becomes thick and high blood pressure. The body, the body would take water from the bones, inflammation from the liver, one of the most important organs, and especially the brain. So we call it cerebrum dehydration. That would create irritation, loss of memory, and also can predispose us to Alzheimer's. 
and then it takes water from the cells. The cells are the foundation of the body. Water. Drink more water. Water. So how much water should we drink? Well, here in kilograms, I put it in weight. So let's just make it simple. If I weigh 180 pounds, I take half my body weight. So what's half of 180 pounds? 90. So I divide 90 by 8. Just make it simple. Half my body weight, that's 90. 8 into 90, that's roughly almost what? 12. About 12 glasses of water I must drink a day. Did you get that? Did you hear that? Now, this is better than taking drugs. Hello? Well, no. Well, the system is this. You get up in the morning, soon you rise. You know, you stretch, you have an ostracolic reflex. That means you go to the stool. You're going to sit down. But as my wife knows, I get up, I keep a bottle, glass of water at my bed. I get up. Now, this little container, I'm not saying you have to use it, but this is what, about two glasses? Mm -hmm. So between the time I get up, this is not have to be your system, but I get up between 4 and 5 o'clock. My breakfast is at 7. You got it? So I got two hours. And I try to have at least two glasses of water in my body an hour before I eat breakfast. Hmm? Two glasses of water before breakfast. Now, two hours after breakfast, I'm drinking more water. No juice. I'm drinking water. So between breakfast and lunch, my, break, my lunch is at 1.30. So I got from 7 o'clock, maybe I finish at 7.30, 8 o'clock. So I got between 8 o'clock and 1.30, I'm drinking more water. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Drinking more water. So not only I get two glasses when I get up in the morning, but between my end of my breakfast and my lunch, I'm going to get in another four glasses of water more. All right, there's lunch. Hour for lunch. After lunch, 1.30, maybe finish at 2, 2.30. Then I'm drinking more water. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, some of us maybe eat three meals. Some of us might eat all day long. So I eat basic two meals. So if you eat three meals, say you eat three meals. So you're drinking water. You know that? You know, you get up. So I got to get this water in. You just say, mm, 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 mm. that's not the way to drink water. Because now you're overpowering your body, your kidneys, and the kidneys are going to have to keep going to the bathroom. So I tell people, you must drink your food. What did I say? Drink your food. How you drink your food? You chew it to its You got to chew, chew, chew. Chew, chew, chew. You don't have a horn. You only have two, 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 two. Just chew, chew, chew. Chew what? No, your food. I say, listen to what I'm saying. You drink your food and you chew your water. Now, now listen, you gotta drink your food now. So I asked, how do you drink your food? She said, you chew to become liquid. So we'll take one bite. Now remember, the only place God put teeth is in your mouth. There's no teeth in your stomach. Hello out there. Hmm? So you take one bite of that food. Now the body got it, especially, it depends if it's protein, or carbohydrates, protein is processed in your stomach. So now you take whatever you eat, a protein could be beans, so you may have chicken, you take one bite, and it's gone down. It's not been broken down into a liquid substance. So your body has to produce more hydrochloric acid in the stomach, which over a period of time, your body will end up with poor digestion, could be colitis, could be Crohn's disease because of poor chewing. So, we chew our liquid. Hmm? Hmm. What do you think about that? Just chew it. Hmm? But we said, man, I got to get 12 glasses of water in. I'm not going to make it that way. No, you already stressed out. Just chew your liquid, huh? Hmm. Mix it with the saliva. Let it slide on down. You won't be running to the bathroom as much. Very practical. What do you think about that? Amen. Just start off with. If you get up, 
Start drinking your water. Now, some of us can benefit from drinking uh, two cups of warm water. What do you think about that? Warm water in the morning, and if you want to squeeze a little lemon in, not through the day, squeeze a little lemon. Lemon tends to alkalinize. Your body at night is detoxifying. It's cleansing. It becomes so acidic. In the morning time, water neutralizes the acid. But lemon water helps to neutralize it, but it aids digestion. You get what I'm saying? But you don't want to drink lemon water throughout the day. Just in the morning, two cups of warm lemon water. All right, water. So my problem was stress. My problem, lack of water. Let's move on. Here we got here. Start with two glasses of water where? In the morning. Now this is something you can try. Now just don't come get this information, disseminate information, but put this to use. Water. Start each morning by drinking two glasses of water, eight ounces of water, two glasses of water. Wait two hours after meals. Why will we wait two hours after meals drinking water? Why not just wash your food down with water? What do you think? What's your name, my friend? Flora. Flora. Why, why did I say, whether you might not understand, why would I say drink two hours after meals? What do you think? To give your body a chance to start breaking down. Very good, Flora. Very good. So some of us might have habit, you know, we, 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 we eat, and that food starts from, so we need something to wash it down. So that dilutes our digestive juices. It really weakens the digestive juice, and, and the food does not digest properly. It will actually ferment. Now, what is fermentation? Anybody know? It's alcohol. It turns to alcohol. That neutralizes the digestive system. It changed the pH of your system, so water intake. Now, when I had arthritis, rheumatoid, I didn't know anything about that except the fact you go into a sauna as an athlete. Now, a sauna is a little different from a steam cabin. You know, when you're in a sauna, just like you all sitting here in this room, say this room is a sauna. You got what I'm saying? You come through the door, we all in the sauna together. What do you think about that? What do you think about it? Here we are, we just sitting there inhaling all the bacteria that's flowing from your pores, huh? I'm serious. And we. Now, we might shrink up a little bit, but also our lungs will atrophy, and we just inhale the bacteria that will require more activation of the immune system. So it's best, this is like a little steam chair. You know, that helps the circulation. The head is out, your foot in hot water, and the body temperature is that little hot plate underneath there, you're sweaty. There's a sheet around there, but your head is out keeping the head cool. Saunas is not something that I would use therapeutic. Now you just want to use it, what you call relaxation. It is not the most healthiest thing you can do. Steam, water. Uh, I have taken what you call ginger baths. Anybody ever had a ginger bath? Oh man, get fresh ginger, go to Walmart anywhere. There's a commercial for Walmart, buy ginger cup of ginger, just chop it up, put it in one quart of water, boil it, throw it in a tub of water, put the ginger in a little stocking, a stocking, throw the ginger in the tub, cool out with some nice hot lemon drink. That helps to alkalinize. Do you know that? Because rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis thrives in an environment that is highly acidic. The blood becomes acidic. The ginger bath would neutralize that. How many heard of Epsom salt bath? Oh, mom just do just you know just throw a half a pound of Epsom salt in a tub of water and chill out. It neutralizes. Try it. Baths then. All right, let's move on to the last. So therefore, we didn't go through all of them. My main thing was stress, hmm? lack of water. And now let's finish up as we're gonna to move to a demonstration diet in arthritis. Now, when I was in college, boy, I had, I had an appetite that was out of this world. Notice this. It says, death is three-fifths each. You see that? Mm -hmm. You know, you got five letters. You take the D off and the H, you got what? E. 
You are what you're eating or what you're eating is eating you. Huh? <laughs> Death in the skillet. My wife has a pot. She uses a demonstration. She called it Death in the Pot. You read this in the book of Kings. and Elijah was a prophet of God and they had a school. And he took the students out on a little excursion and camping trip. And it was time to eat. He said, let's gather some lunch. And they gathered some lunch. They brought it back. And when they brought it back, they said, oh, man of God, there's death in the pot. They found wild gourds they could not eat. So what's in the pot could be contributing to our arthritis. Danger. Your life may be in jeopardy. Huh? Are you safe at the plate? I'm not talking about the plate that you slide into first base. Are you safe at the plate in your kitchen? We find here in the book of Ecclesiastes 10, 17, thy princes eat where? In due season, timing. For what? Strength. Strength. That's what we call the glad diet. G-L-A-D. God's life activating diet. And not for what? That's the sad diet. What do you think that is? Standard American, Standard American diet. Huh? S-A-D-G-L-D. We want to go from sad to glad. Huh? A glad diet. I lived the first 27 years of my life on the standard American diet. What kind of diet it is? High in fat. Do we need fat? Yes. Sure. Low in fiber. Instead of me eating whole grain bread, I ate mostly white bread. Whitey the bread, sooner you're dead. No fiber. You know, right before the depression, folk ate whole grains, but once it became so civilized, so mechanism, we had to transport our food long distance to the grocery store. So we could not haul food that was intact. So we began to process the food because of transportation. So we take the whole grain bread and we strip it of the fiber. We strip it of all the B vitamins, the calcium. And guess what we do? Then we call it enrich. We take all the good stuff off. Then we add, added it to it. And then we put on the bread, enrich. I would not call that enrich. I call that being ripped off. Mm. White bread is not enrich, no matter what you call it. I eat a lot of that. High in protein. The average person in this country on a high protein diet. Do we need protein? Yes. yes. But the average American diet is high in these two. You go to McDonald's or the fast food, all you're going to get is high fat, high protein, and low in nutrients. That's why you see a trend today. They will add some nutrients to it. They give you a little bit of uh, a healthy menu, but that just keeps you satisfied. But we're still eating high protein. High protein is a contributing cause to cancer to allergies, high protein, high fat, high blood pressure, we find. No time to eat, fast food. We like convenient food, huh? Can you imagine that, driving and eating, huh? Milkshake in one hand, and burgers in the other hand, fast food, fast food. Calcium robbers, remember this. Calcium is for the joints, we gotta move quick. Tobacco and alcohol depletes the body of calcium. Mm -hmm. Caffeine robs the body of calcium. Not just the coffee, but the soft drink. Physical inactivity robs the body of calcium. Excess protein, the more protein we eat, the body loses calcium. And one of the things that I had, not this, but too much phosphorus that's found in the meats and the, and the, and the soft drink. You go to your uh, rheumatologist, whatever, they're not going to talk to you about this. They're going to just give you some anti-inflammatory drugs. But talk about your diet and your stress, that's a misnomer to them. We're talking about educating. We're talking about taking control 
of our own life. Too much salt. We need salt, but too much salt robs the body of calcium. Robs the body. You see these things here. Now, this was my problem. I was a sugar holic. I put sugar on sugar. Sugar and ice cream. Huh? I love sugar. I could have been a sweet person, but I was bitter. I love sugar. I would have a sugar fit. I would take my favorite can of candy bar with Snickers. I love Snickers. And the other one was Butterfinger. Huh? And Baby Ruth. And what? R.C. Cola. Candy bar and R.C. Cola. In college, sugar robs the body of B vitamins. What's B vitamins for? Digestion in your nerves. Sugar contains, contains no nutrients, therefore, which requires nutrients for, to metabolize sugar, especially your B vitamins. Sugar robs the body, decreases white blood cell. This young guy is drunken on Duncan. Hmm? <laughs> He's drunken on Duncan. Sugar. One teaspoon of sugar per day. If we took in no sugar, no white sugar, our body, our white blood cell, one, can destroy 14 bacteria every second with no sugar. As we take in sugar, six, teaspoon, six teaspoons, you notice the kill. It decreases. 24. So that means more sugar we take in, it weakens our immune system. Sugar. Hmm? Sugar. Not only sugar affects the B vitamins and no fiber, but it robs the body of calcium. What I'm saying, the curse causes and what? So we find the cause, we find the cure. Remove the cause. What do you think about this? I mean, you, you probably spend a lot of money going to the doctor, paying him even your, your little fee, but this information is priceless, huh? Oh, I had another serious problem in college. Man, I love chocolate. I love chocolate. Hershey candy bar, Snickers. It's habit forming, causes asthma attack, vomiting, itchy mouth, abdominal pain, cough, clogged nose, itchy high, sores around the mouth. Chocolate affects the calcium in the body. What a, darker the chocolate, the more calcium you lose. You're absolutely right. That rich chocolate, the best chocolate you can find, you go over to Switzerland, where I've been. But I don't eat the chocolate. The darker, just like the wine. The longer it's set, the mellow it is. You get what I'm saying? So it's mainly for your taste. But they don't tell you what it does. What's in that chocolate, my friend, is what we call theobromine. What is that? Now, if you begin to break that word down, T-H-E-O, anybody that studied the Bible know what Theo means? Theo? God. God. Bromine. Food. Food of the gods. Mercy. Well, it depends. What God? Huh? It says, irritates the central nervous system that controls inflammatory action, calls insomnia, itching, depression, and anxiety. Because it affects the serotonin in your body. These are neurotransmitters. Additives are required to mask the bitterness. The place where cocoa is grown the most is Ghana in Africa. I share some in the month. Sanitation. Remember this. Sanitation standards are lower than those practiced in the United States. Now, why I got this little guy here? Follow this little guy here. Notice what's happening here. Notice what this little guy this guy, he, you see that? Mm -hmm. Now, what are you saying, Jackson? <laughs> Food defects action. Visible or solid animal excreta. Now, this is the FDA. Must not exceed 10 milligram per pound. 120 insect fragments per cup or two rodent hairs Per cup. Mercy. Now, this is not something I Google made up. You can just check it out. Just go and do, do your research. Ghana, when they spread that cocoa crop on the, on the grounds, 
Rats love to make their homes in that cocoa plant. Mm -hmm. And you think that those people who inspect this are going to pluck out those rat hairs? So if the theobromine gets you, there are re pieces in your Reese's. The rat turds, chocolate drops. Oh. <laughs> well, if you think I'm trying to help deliver you, sure am. Because I was delivered. Notice this now, follow me, gotta close up. You got I-N-E. I-N-E is a protein molecule. Theobromine, you got it? Caffeine, nicotine, cocaine. They all are cousins. You look at a person shooting up, but you and you and I are on our Hershey candy bar. We are shooting up also. We get a different high that has devastating effect upon our body. So I was a chocolate holic, too much protein. Proteins, eating foods with a face is not God designed for the human race. I, I ate everything that had a face, a mama, and lips. That's what I ate. Face, mamas, and lips. Cow has a face, had lips, and has a mother. Mm -hmm. A fish has face, lips, and has a mother. And that excess protein aggravated my condition. So I'm not here to tell you you gotta eat a plant-based eat, but you gotta watch your protein. Are you following me? Eating flesh food increases disease 10 times more. Eating foods with a face, it's not God's design. Chicken, you name it. And one of the foods that I definitely will be very clear on as we look at this, Mr. Hall, especially among the black community, would you find more black folks in the authorized. I took this picture, I was in Thailand. This picture, as I go going to, to town, I saw this whole hog head on the table. And you can't see this lady, she, she didn't want to take a picture, but she's fanning the flies. Now this is not on ice, but you will be on ice. Mm -hmm. They people come by this whole hog head. Mm -hmm. We're fine. Don't eat, don't touch. I would suggest to you, you best to eat white meat, as best as you can a chicken, but the pig, Anybody familiar with Out House? Amen. You know, I grew up in the country with Out House. <coughs> There's different name for Out House. In Australia, they call that the long drop of the thunderbox. Hmm? <laughs> so we find here, flies live in Out House. Anybody seen that? Mm -hmm. They live in Out House. Mm -hmm. hmm? Frogs like to eat flies that live in Out House. Mm -hmm. You ever seen that? I've seen that. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Snakes eat the frog, that eat the fly, that lives in the outhouse. What do you think about that? The pig eat the snake, that eat the frog, that eat the fly, that live in the outhouse. What do you think about that? Hmm, here you come. Here you come. You eat the pig, that eat the snake, that eat the frog, that eat the fly, that lives in the outhouse. Hmm? What do you think about that? I would say, kick him out your house. I'm telling you, the pig, parasitic, the pig, high in fat, nutrients, bacteria, and that's what's killing especially the black community. Kick him out. Purine, you remember that? Purine produces a byproduct of uric acid, and that's what aggravated my arthritis. Purine found in the proteins, found the alcohol, etc. Plant-based diet are low in purine, simulate little uric acid. So there's peas, there's beans, so this is the thing. You ask your doctor, take the pea off of purine, you got what? Yeah. Urine. So the more animal food you're eating, the more urine you're ingesting because that's what's built up into their body. A lot of protein. Cheese produce uric acid, burns the liver. There's a cheese on the market. Anybody here in Jackson, you heard of Grubs? You know where Grubs located? You know, they got a nice little cheese called Dia Cheese. There's a cheese there. That's all right. Eggs, another high protein food. 
What's wrong with this picture here? What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture? Anybody? The wrong species is underneath there, huh? What's wrong with that picture, huh? Milk is not a natural. Human beings are the only species, and I love, I, I, I love chocolate milk. Being an athlete, I would drink quarts of chocolate milk. I, just, I would not put it in a glass. I'd take the quart, just drink it, because I was going to get muscles in But not knowing, it was adding to my rheumatoid arthritis. We're the only species that drink other species' milk. You think about that? Hmm? The only time I saw a pig drinking milk, a human milk, I saw it in Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. Women would breastfeed the pigs. And that's not, I'm in Papua New Guinea. Right there, they breastfeed the pig. The, pig, the pigs are deficiency, the pigs are malnourished, etc. They feed the pig breast milk. Mm -hmm. All right. So, anyway, I can spend a lot of time. We're going to close down here and go. These, this is just showing you Western diet, high protein. This is God's life activating diet. Low in fat. We need fat. Fat comes from all plant based food. High in fiber, more fiber. It lubricates your bowel. You got to answer the call. When you got the urge to go, and you say you're too busy, you did not answer the call. You lost that call. It will accumulate in the colon. You can have six meals in your colon and not even realize it until it's time to take it out. High in nutrient, low in protein. Answer the call. Fruit, nuts, grains, and vegetables. Add more to your diet. If you, if you like meat, try to add more vegetables and grains to your diet. Raw salads, if you can handle them. Seeds, etc. All right. Choose a plant-based diet. Choose more plant foods. Almonds, filbert, flax seeds, sesame seeds, high in protein, high in fat. Avocados, uh, olives, all this food God put together. Kale, one cup of kale, 179 milligrams of calcium. You don't have to go buy a calcium supplement. Just add some kale to your diet. Hmm? All of these food. Weight-bearing, exercise, reduce protein, avoid calcium robbers, get sunshine, plenty of sunshine when they come out, plenty of sunshine, eat calcium-rich food, green vegetables. These are the foods that you want to avoid if you have arthritis. We call them nightshades. They have a, a chemical called solanine, green peppers, eggplants, white potatoes, and tomatoes until your body becomes able to handle that. If you do have arthritis, these things I would definitely eliminate for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Healthy by what? Choice. Mm -hmm. Plant-based, regular exercise. Abstain from alcohol and caffeine, illicit drugs, smoking. Maintain a healthy weight, trust in God. Stress. We want to bury those habits. So Emory, we're going to share as we close, but we want to put everything in the coffin that contribute to arthritis. You find the cause, remove it. Hmm? Find the power to change. And I would suggest to you all that you can make a resolve, but it's hard for you to stick on. You're not in church, but I tell you, I had to realize there's a power outside of me that would keep me for 40 years eating a certain way. And I tell you, is it easy? No. But once you tap into that power, you habituate yourself, it comes as easy as breathing. Breathing. There's a joy of eating the way God designed. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. That's your mind. For they are what? Life to those who find them. And what? Help. Help. God gives word. I can do all things by myself. Lord, help me to make this step. Make, help me to make this step. His grace is sufficient. That's sustainable. If you try it in your own strength, it's going to short live. It's going to short live. Health is a choice and not a chance. Hmm?